Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to church this morning to all of you that are here and to everybody that's watching online. I hope you are well. I hope you're healthy. Just killing a little bit of time while Lori gets ready here. But uh, what else can we talk about? Uh... I thought this morning was going a little too... I forgot a very important part, which was to give my nephew... The scriptures that I'm going to be preaching on later. So yeah, that's right. I'm my excited. apologies if anything goes wrong. <laughs> well, we'll get you guys to stand this morning. Let's turn our attention to the only one that is worthy of our praise. Amen. And this is our last Sunday to sing Christmas songs. So some of you are rejoicing in that and some of you are sad. <laughs> but uh, either way, let's sing them out and let's sing them. Let's sing, sing them at the top loud. of our lungs. The herald angels sing glory to the newborn king. Peace on earth and mercy mild. God and sinners reconciled. Joyful all ye nations rise. Join the triumph of the skies with angelic hosts grow 
Well, we got something a little different for announcements this morning. Um, how many of you guys have wondered where in the world Pastor Lee is? <laughs> he just seems to have disappeared. So hopefully, this video, you can have a seat. Go ahead and have a seat. And uh, hopefully this video will work. Give me the thumbs up whenever you're ready, Bronson. All right, let's see. Morning, everybody. Well, as you can tell, I'm not in church this morning, and neither is my family. I've won the opportunity to self-isolate once again. Some people I work with, uh, they got COVID, so I've had to take the test. No results yet, so I'm assuming it's negative, which is fantastic. I've got no symptoms. Family's got no symptoms. We're all doing good. We're just playing the isolation game now for the next two weeks, and what a great time to do it over the Christmas break. Am I right? It is what it is, but I do have a couple announcements this morning since I'm not there. The first one is with the food bank. Today was the last day to bring anything in for it, so if you brought food, fantastic, and if you missed the opportunity, you can always take it directly there. Uh, Jordan and Valor will be taken either today or tomorrow to the, to the food bank, I hope. If not, sometime this week is going in there. Uh, other than that, I want to encourage you to tune in for the Christmas Eve service. It's going to be the community Christmas Eve service this year. Uh, we'll have a link on our Facebook page for you to watch. Tune in, check it out, and let's just all uh, have a good time this Christmas. It's going to be a uh, Christmas like we've never experienced before, but that's okay because, you know, as long as we take time to stop and focus on what Christmas is all about, that's all that really matters. There will be time to gather together afterwards. There will be time to get together and do the meal and to do the presents and everything. But we can take this time to celebrate the birth of Christ to the small little gatherings we have, whether you're by yourself or with the five you're allowed. Just take the moment to just... Uh, just remember what this is all about. So from my family to yours, I just want to say Merry Christmas. God bless you guys. We're going to miss you. I know lori has got a fantastic message lined up today, and I know the worship team is going to do okay because it's charged fleeting. But hey, I miss you guys. Wish I could be there, and uh, hopefully I'll do announcements again next week. God bless. Merry Christmas. Right on. Right on. It's a little... I don't mind having them, you know, on there. Yeah, it's a little easier not having them around. But uh, anyways, no, I'm just kidding. We'll get you guys to stand back up, and we'll keep, uh, keep worshiping this morning. And one star burns in the darkness, shines with a promise, Emmanuel. One child born in the stillness, living within us, Emmanuel. We sing glory. We're singing glory, glory. Let there be peace. Let there be peace. Singing glory, glory.
the difference is in this Christmas season. I just pray that you will cover them and infuse them with your peace. Just pray that that will come over them right now, Father, just a real peace. They know you have everything in control. Thank you, Father.
welcome each one of you here. You can be seated. And uh, I guess I get to take this thing off. It's going to tell Lee, I guess he has the best job in the place because he doesn't have to use it when he preaches. <laughs> and he doesn't even have to come to church. Well, that is something. <laughs> but I think Bronson would agree that at least Lee remembers to give him the, sur uh, the scripture references before the sermon starts. So let me just grab my water and then we're going to get going on this today. For those of you who are tuning in and don't know who I am, my name is Lori Bargan, and we've been attending here for quite a while now with our family, my husband Lloyd and our children, and we have some special guests here today as well because we have our girls' little sisters visiting us, and we're so happy to have Emmy and Eva with us. So in all of the COVID news this week, you may have missed the news story about the man who crossed the Irish Sea with his jet ski. It was an exhausting four-hour journey. Now, understand that it was supposed to be a 40-minute journey, but he had just bought the jet ski on Thursday, and then a storm blew up. But love won out, and he crossed from Scotland to the Isle of Man, all for love, four hours long, but when he got there, Sadly, he was arrested for breaking quarantine law. <laughs> so love makes us do strange things sometimes. Also newsworthy this upcoming week, but I'm not sure that it'll make the news, is the birth of a king who will lay aside his wealth and power, who will age backwards to be born as a baby to a poverty-stricken couple who aren't even legally married yet. To be born in a barn of all places, love certainly does make us do strange things. From Luke chapter 2, at that time the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This was the first census taken when Quirinus was governor of Syria. All returned to their own ancestral towns to register for the census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, who was now expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in the manger because there was no lodging available for them. This baby who was prophesied about in the Old Testament grew up and lived a life of love and sacrifice, even giving himself as a sacrifice for our sins. Philippians 2, 6 to 8 says, though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. Romans 5, 7 to 8 picks up this theme. Now, most people would not be willing to die for an upright person, though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who was especially good. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. All of us have people in our lives that we love. Usually this love is not a perfect love. It comes with strings attached and a list of lines that, if crossed get them removed from our lives. We can love deeply, but still imperfectly. If you aren't sure about this, let's take a look at 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and see how we measure up. And I will let you fill in your own survey at the end. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 is known as the love chapter. It reads, If I could speak all the languages of earth and of angels, but didn't love others... I would only be a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I had the gift of prophecy, and if I understood all of God's secret plans and possessed all knowledge, 
And if I had such faith that I could move mountains, but didn't love others, I would be nothing. If I gave everything I have to the poor, and even sacrificed my body, I could boast about it, but if I didn't love others, I would have gained nothing. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable, and it keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. Prophecy and speaking in unknown languages and special knowledge will become useless, but love will last forever. Now our knowledge is partial and incomplete, and even the gift of prophecy reveals only part of the whole picture. But when, but when the time of perfection comes, these partial things will become useless. And skipping down to verse 13, three things will last forever, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. Now, let's get down to the core of this. I'm a teacher by profession and by calling. So let's get to the test part. I want you to take a look at verses 4 through 7, and where it says love, I want you to replace it with your name and see if the statement is still true. I'll show you. Okay. I, Frank, Joe, or George, am patient and kind. I, Linda, Susan, Karen, am not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. I do not demand my own way. I am not irritable. Or this, I keep no record of being wronged. I do not rejoice about injustice, but rejoice whenever the truth wins out. Are you sure about this? Maybe you better check your social media feed and see which things you spend your most time reading about. I never give up. I never lose faith. I am always hopeful. I endure through every circumstance. Well, how did you do? If you answered eight out of eight, you're doing great. I presume that you are spending lots of time in the Word and that you're filled with the Holy Spirit and leaning on His power to get through your day. Or I presume that you are a terrific liar. For the rest of us, there is, this is the season of hope of preparation, of joy, and of love. And there is hope, you see, because God is love. So let's go back to our survey and see how our Savior, Jesus Christ, measures up. Let's insert his name there. Jesus is patient and kind. You only need to look at Jesus' attitude towards the lesser thans of his society to see evidence of his patience and kindness. His words to the woman caught in adultery, recorded in John chapter 8, neither do I condemn you, go and sin no more. Or his kindness to the hated tax collector Zacchaeus in Luke 19, when he called him by name and went to stay in his house. His kindness to children in Matthew 19, verses 13 to 15. One day, some parents brought their children to Jesus so he could lay his hands on them and pray for them. But his disciples scolded the parents for bothering him. But Jesus said, let the children come to me. Don't stop them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to those who are like these children. And he placed his hands on their heads and blessed them before he left. Jesus is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. Philippians 2, 6 to 8 says, Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. Jesus did not demand his own way. In the Garden of Gethsemane, he knew what was coming. He knew that he would have to die a slow, painful, agonizing death. Just thinking about it was so intense 
that he sweat great drops of blood. Now, I kind of think I know what they're talking about there. Um, when our son was going through his last heart surgery and we didn't know if he would live or die, I was up in the chapel and I was crying and praying so intensely that the next morning I woke up and didn't recognize myself in the mirror. I had burst all of the blood vessels around my eyes. And Jesus' situation was so much worse than that. Spoiler alert, our son did end up dying. And spoiler alert, Jesus ended up dying for our sins. And that was his choice. And yet he prayed in Luke 22, verse 42, Father, if you are willing, please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. Oh boy, that's hard sometimes, isn't it? Have you been going through some hard times lately and you just want God to remove all these things from your life, just take them away? And sometimes he does, but sometimes he makes us walk through them. How much, how much um, strength do we need from the Holy Spirit to say, yet I want your will to be done, not mine? Jesus was not irritable. He worked long hours for basically no pay. A few loaves, a couple of small fish. <laughs> and sometimes he was so exhausted from the crowds, he just needed to go away and be by himself, and yet they would follow him. But he had patience for them. Matthew 9, 35 to 36 says, Jesus traveled through all the towns and villages of that area, teaching in the synagogues and announcing the good news about the kingdom. And he healed every kind of disease and illness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were confused and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. We get so irritated with our loved ones sometimes, our little kids that can't help but act like little kids. We need to let this be an example to us and ask Jesus to give us compassion for those around us, starting with the people in our homes, the ones who are going to be, you know, quarantined there with us for the next couple of weeks. Jesus wasn't even biologically related to these people who were following him around, and yet he had time and energy for them and compassion. He can give you that too. He can give you time and energy and compassion as you ask his Holy Spirit to strengthen you. Jesus kept no record of being wronged. While he hung on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. Luke 23, 34. Now, I'm a McDonald on my mother's side. And our family motto is reportedly Gaelic for no one insults me with impunity. In other words, cross me and I will, you will not get away with it. This is the opposite of what our Savior models here. Jesus also did not rejoice about injustice, but rejoiced whenever the truth won out. And he never gives up. Notice that I put this in the present tense. Not he never gave up, which he didn't but he never gives up. He never gives up on us. Luke 15 tells us tax collectors and other notorious sinners often came to listen to Jesus teach. This made the Pharisees and teachers of religious law complain that he was associating with such sinful people, even eating with them. So Jesus told them this story. If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them gets lost, what will he do? Won't he leave the 99 others in the wilderness and go to search for the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he will joyfully carry it home on his shoulders. When he arrives, he will call together his friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, because I've found my lost sheep. In the same way, there is more joy in heaven over one lost sinner who repents and returns to God than over 99 others who are righteous and haven't strayed away. Now, if you're feeling like that lost sheep, if you want to call out to the Good Shepherd today, this Christmas, just tell him that right now. He is present and he is listening to you. And when you do turn to him, there will be much, much rejoicing in heaven. I'm going to clump the next two together. Jesus is always hopeful and he never loses faith. Also from Luke 15, the description of the father of the prodigal son, like our heavenly father. And while he was still a long way off, 
His father saw him coming. Filled with love and compassion, he ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. That's how our Heavenly Father feels about us. He waits for us day after day to come to him. He doesn't wait for us to make those last few stumbling steps towards him even. He'll pick up and run towards us. God endures through every circumstance. In Revelation 1.8, it reads, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord God. I am the one who is, who always was, and who is still to come, the Almighty One. God was with the Father, or sorry, Jesus was with the Father at the beginning of the world when God said, let us make man in our image in Genesis 1.26. Then God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That is what we celebrate at Christmas. But it doesn't end there. Revelation 22:12 says, Look, I am coming soon, bringing my reward with me to repay all people according to their deeds. So this week, as we celebrate the first coming of the King of Heaven, our child King, baby in the manger, let's also not lose sight of the fact that he will be coming again soon. Let's prepare our hearts for him. There's an old song that says, wise men still seek Jesus today. They bring their hearts the best gift. Give him yours without delay. He will give you peace and joy that will not cease. Wise men still seek Jesus today. So wise men and wise women, wise boys and wise girls, Let's prepare our hearts for our coming King today. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray that we will let your words marinate in our hearts. That we will allow you to speak to us, Father. For those who need your strength to show love to their loved ones around them, they're just on their last nerve and somebody's leaning on it right now, maybe even shouting in their ear, I pray for that person. Give them strength, Father. Give them love, just supernatural strength, your Holy Spirit strength. For those who do want to turn their lives over to you today, Father, we just lift up our hearts to you. We ask you to forgive our sins. Come into our hearts, Lord Jesus. Be the king of our lives. There's an old hymn that says, King of my life, I crown thee now. Thine will the glory be. And Father, we just pray that you'll be that king for us. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you. Pray that you'll be with each church family member and each of our family members this Christmas. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for your attention and for listening. Now, we had just a little gift for Lee for the very end. Um, he has this song that he loves, and we're going to sing it for him right now. Sing it along if you know it. Let's all stand.
Before Christmas. That song, you just want to keep playing it forever, hey? Yeah. Some of you are like, no, not at all. I wish it would have ended quicker. But uh, Merry Christmas, everybody. We love you guys. We'll see you. The 27th is our last service before next year. Be blessed. Um, yeah, that's it. Christmas Eve service, tune into that, and um, yeah, we'll see you guys the 27th. Merry Christmas.